Amen. Well, glory to God. You know, we are in a time when God is really doing something powerful, but there are very few people that want to be involved. <laughs> Amen. With what God is doing. They, we're going to just go forth and just pray and just continue to release our faith. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, for your holy word. God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We thank you for this day. For this is the day that thou hast made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, you know the people that are here tonight and those that are still on the way, Father. And I ask you in the name of Jesus that, God, that you would give me what you will have me to speak and to that they would be ministered to tonight. I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you, the eyes of my understanding, to be enlightened, that I will know what is the hope of your calling and what is the seen and greatness of your power to us, to us who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we glorify you now in advance. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I, ask, I exercise the authority that's been given me by the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I bind it in the spiritual realm right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I break his power to exist in this place. I loose it from his assignment in Jesus' name. And Father, I believe today, Father, for divine health, divine healing to manifest in this place. I thank you, Lord God, that your word would not return void. But God, you will be glorified in all that we say and do because your word is truth. Oh God, we thank you that your word will not return forth, but it will bring about that which you have desired. And I give you glory and praise for it right now in advance in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I serve notice to the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and the spiritual wickedness in high places. I loose you from your assignment concerning this church, concerning this people. Right now, the blood of Jesus is upon them. You can't touch them. Father, let your kingdom come forth in this place. Let your will be done. I thank you for it. Amen and amen. Glory to God. You see, on, on Sunday mornings right now, we've been dealing with a message Restoring the image of God back in man. And the last two Sundays we've been talking about uh, walking in the image of God. Walking in the image of God. See, Adam in the Garden of Eden, he walked in the image. See, because he was created in his image and his likeness. So he walked in that. Amen. And God, is, I, I believe with all my heart that God is going to restore the church back to his original state. Amen. And we are a people that God is using. Amen. Well, anyway, God bless you and welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. And I pray that tonight that you will be blessed, that you will be ministered to in every area of your life. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I titled this message tonight, I titled this message tonight, We Must... All, we must all proclaim the gospel to the people of the world. We must all proclaim the gospel to the people. Amen. In other words, if you're a child of God, your lifestyle should be proclaiming the gospel. What did Jesus, how did Jesus' ministry start out? See, this is the way that God wants us to see ourselves. How did Jesus' ministry start out? Well, open your Bible with me to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Amen. Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 61, I want you to look with me at verse 1 and 2. Amen. Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. Glory to his name. Amen. And it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Oh, I love that part right there because he's talking. I, I, when I read that, it's, it's, it, it's, it sounds like he's talking directly to me. Amen. 
and I believe he's talking to you as well. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel, to preach glad, uh, good tidings unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim liberty, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort them that mourn, to comfort them that mourn. Now, I want you to turn your scriptures once again to the book of Luke, chapter 4. We're going to see this prophetic word that we are reading right here in Isaiah, that Jesus, he proclaimed it in the synagogue to show the people that that time has come and was at hand. Luke chapter 4. And verse number 18. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord God, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, who's talking here? Jesus is talking here. So, he is setting in motion that which his purpose for coming. Amen? He is setting in motion that which his purpose for coming. Amen. So he says right here in verse number 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Oh, I like that. To, he had, to, to, uh, he had, to, to, to preach the gospel to the poor, he had, glory to God. You know what? When I heard this message years ago, <laughs> I was very poor. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have nothing. But you know what? God touched my heart one day and the, the word became very rich to me. Notice what it said again, verse number 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the broken heart. You know, you ever had a broken heart and you wander around wondering, Lord, well, I need healing. God, is anyone there? You know, you ever, you ever seen, you know, you see someone so desperate that they look up to heaven and say, is anyone there? Is anyone listening to me? I've been that way before. Amen. But you know what? I found out that there was someone there and he was listening to me. Amen. Notice, let's read it again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. To, pro, to preach the deliverance to the captive and recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I believe that today that the Spirit of God is in this place. Let's turn to one more place before we get started. The book of Acts, chapter 10. The book of Acts, chapter 10. See, God wants us all to have a part in delivering the gospel to the world. Amen. We are God's children. We are his workmanship. Amen. We have been given a responsibility to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. Notice what it says right here in verse number, uh, uh, Acts chapter 10, and verse number 38. Acts 10, verse 30, are you there? Amen. How, let me get there, so y'all can already beat me. I'm here talking to you. Y'all trying to get ahead of me. <laughs> Amen. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, here we are. How God anointed Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. So, you know what that tells me? That oppression 
It's not something that God sends upon his people to teach them a lesson. Oppression is the work of the enemy. Get, get her. It's the work of the enemy, and he's there to bring you into bondage. Amen? That's why Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. What is the gospel to the one that, has been, that, that is poor? That he doesn't have to be poor no more. What is the gospel to the one that is sick? That his healing, that he, that he doesn't have to be sick no more. You know, I, I used to be very sick. When I was growing up, I was, you know, a teenager. Just, you know, just a dumb child. A kid, you know, running around doing things that I, couldn't, that I shouldn't have been doing. But nobody ever told me that I shouldn't be doing it. So I did it. I did those things. And let me tell you something. I experienced a lot of hardship and a lot of pain because of that, and I needed help. There was no one could help me but Jesus. I didn't have the money to go to the doctor. I didn't have a, 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 a insurance to go to the doctor. I didn't have nothing. All I had was my Bible, and I was sitting at home, and I'm hurting. I mean, my stomach feel like it's about to burst open. And my, and my head feel like it's about to pop like a balloon. I was hurting so bad. And I began to read the word of God. And, I, and, I, and, and, I, and I, when I turn, to, and turn your Bible to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. It's very important for you because, see, if you can get a hold of this, you will, you, you will never give the doctor uh, the first opportunity to minister to you. You start looking to Jesus to minister to you, and then the doctor will be your second choice, not your first choice. Amen? Hallelujah. I looked at verse, I looked at uh, Mark chapter 16, amen, and I began to read in the word of God in Mark chapter 16 from verse number 15, it says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen? Go ye into all the world. And then we say, verse number 15, he said, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. You see, I can't make you believe what I'm telling you. My job is to preach it. It's not, my job is not to make you believe it. If you can't believe it, then you have a problem within yourself. It, it, you don't have a problem with me. That's a problem within yourself. Amen. But notice what the word of God says. He said, verse 16 again, and, the, and, he, and he, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and, but he that believeth not shall be damned. See, when we refuse to believe the gospel, we hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves. Amen. Because, see, God has given us everything that we need to receive the promises of God, but we have a problem when it comes to us believing the gospel. We have a problem. Now notice what it says right here in verse number 17. This is very important. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. Because you see, I like this because it tells me that I don't have to believe for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. I don't have to call for them at this point. The Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, what signs are we looking for to follow us at this point? And well, when, if you're sick and hurting, you, you want the sign of God's healing power to follow you, right? Am I right? If you, if you are uh, if you in bondage or something, in, in, uh, hurting somewhere, you want God's healing power to be manifest in your life. So this is what, what you've got to believe. Notice what he said. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, this is the part you need to underline right here in your Bible. This is the part you need to underline right here in your Bible. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, who shall lay hands on the sick? Who is he saying that shall lay hands on the sick? He's speaking to them that believe. 
He said in verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You see, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not just sharing something with you that, I, that I've read. I'm sharing from you from my experience. You, if you never had an experience with God, then it's hard for you to understand what I'm saying. But if you had an experience, first of all, the experience of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's the, that's the first miracle that you, that you really need to experience. But that... But notice what I, I like this right here because it, it shows me that if I only believe, if I only believe the gospel, if I only believe what the word of God said, if I only can just put my mind uh, and it just make my mind just shut up and let that, you know, and, and, and shut down everything that's speaking to me and just hear what the spirit of God is saying to me, I might come to that place where I can actually hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to my heart. Because, see, there's a lot of voices that is trying to, even right now, I'm, I'm ministering to you right now. Now, even while I'm ministering to you right now, there's, there's, vo there, there's other things that try to get your attention. There's other things trying to get your attention to keep you from hearing what the Spirit of God is saying. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. That just that's just like uh, that's just like that's just like you you sitting there trying to figure out something. And all of a sudden, something else take your attention, and you forgot all about what you what you what you what you trying to figure out. Now you got to go back and say, well, "What I think about? Well, what was I thinking?" You know. Now you got to go back to that again. Amen. Why? Because you allow something to steal your attention. The devil is out to take your attention off of everything that God has promised you. And God is wanting to bring you back to the place where you can hear what he is saying. And in order for you to hear what he's saying, you need to just shut everything down. You, I mean, you just need to just shut it down. When you walk into these doors, you need to leave your, 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 your household, your job, everything, your children, all that stuff needs to stay outside. When you come in here, when you come in God's house, you come in to hear from God. Because, see, your answer if it was at home, you'd have stayed at home. Hallelujah. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen out there. <laughs> but that's all good. But your problem is not at home. Your problem is in yourself. It's in your heart. Your problem is in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to deal with that issue of your heart. See, because see, a lot of us have deep, hidden wounds. But God wants to touch those wounds today. I want you to turn to Jeremiah chapter... Uh, I think it's chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. And verse number 17, if I'm correct. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is correct. I'm just following the Holy Ghost on this, on this part right here. Now, notice what he said. For I will restore. Now, now notice what he said. Hear, hear this. For I will restore health unto thee. God is trying to get a point across to us today that he wants to restore health to us. Amen. And I will heal thee of, now notice what he said, of thy wounds. See, a lot of us, we, we you know, through our lifetime, our, we, you know, the, especially those that are of age, they have gone through a lot. And there's a lot of, 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 of uh, disappointment and rejections and, and hurts and, and, and pains that we've experienced in our growth. And a lot of these things have left a mark on our hearts. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Have left a, a, a dull mark on our hearts that we, that, that, makes a, that makes it hard for us to believe something that can really be true, that can help us. And this is why God is wanting to bring us around to this place. He said, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. Now, I didn't say that. The Lord said that. The Lord said that. Now, since we over here, and, and since we're over here so close to, to Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah chapter 
Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah 41. I thought I knew you thought I was going to Isaiah 53. I'll go there later on, but not right now. Right now, I want to take you to Isaiah 41. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, see, you got to understand that God is with you, that God is for you, that God is on your side, that he's not against you. Glory to God. Notice what it says right here in verse number, Isaiah 41, verse number 9. He says, Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. I like verse 10 because it says, Fear not, for I am what? With thee. You see, if I know that I got God on my side, if I know that God is with me, I don't have no need to fear what the enemy is trying to do to me. Because, see, my heart is not, my heart, but what I believe in my heart is not based on, it's not based on what I see that's around me. Because what I'm looking at from my natural standpoint, these things are subject to change. But when I focus on the things of the Spirit, I'm looking at the things of eternity. These things never change. And God said in Hebrew chapter 8 and verse 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 8, I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. Mm. So if God don't change, then why is it that it's so hard for us to believe that we can be healed today? That we can be delivered today. That whatever demonic force that is working against our hearts, our mind, and our spirit. That Jesus said that he had that he come to deliver the broken heart. He come to proclaim, the, uh, to set the captives free. He didn't say he come to watch you while you was in bondage, while you were down there suffering. He said he come to set you free. How many of you want to be set free today? Glory to God. I know I, I, I want to stay free. I'm free right now, and I want to stay free. There was a time when I was in so much bondage. And I mean, I was, I, my bondage had bondage. <laughs> I was just in that much bondage. Amen. But notice what I like, and I like verse number, verse number 10. Let's read that again. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. For I am thy God. I will strengthen. Notice they said, I will strengthen thee. What did he tell us in, in, in Jeremiah uh, 30 and 17? That he will, he will, he will heal our, our wounds. He will strengthen us. He will heal our wounds. He tells us right here that he will strengthen us. Amen. I, yea, I will uphold thee with the with I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. God is with you today. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you're doing right now. All you, I mean, if you just come to God with a sincere heart and say, Father, I repent. God, I have done wrong. Please forgive me. You think that God will turn his back on you? What did he, what did he tell the disciples? Look at, and, and look at Luke chapter, chapter 17. Let's see what he told his disciples about forgiving. Amen? Let's see what he told his disciples about forgiving. Look at Luke chapter 17. Are y'all still with me? Because see, this is, this is going to determine whether or not you're ready to receive what God has for you. If you're ready to, if you're ready to acknowledge, my God, God, I have ought against my brother, my sister, my cousin, my I, God, you just don't know. I'm mad at the whole world. And right now, I don't know if I want to believe anything. Amen. Well, I'm going to help you right here. Because see, if we can deal with the, if we can deal with the issues of your of your emotions right now, then your healing. It's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. Notice what it says right here in Luke chapter 17. And let's see right here in verse number. Verse, let's just see verse number, uh, 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 verse number three. It said, take heed to yourself. If any brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And, he, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, 
thou shalt forgive him. You know, that's, gone, that's kind of going a little bit too far. How, you know, that's kind of going a little bit too far. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of times in a day that he's saying that we should forgive. Amen. How many of you know it's some, that's why he says in verse number five, let's read down, let's read on down verse number five. He said, verse number five says, and the apostles said unto him, Lord, increase our faith. Why do you think the disciples asked the Lord to increase their faith? The disciples, the Lord said, if you don't, if I, if I, if I, if I you know, I'm already to pop this in the eye, you better increase my faith, Lord. Otherwise, I don't know if I can handle this thing. Amen. I'm about to dot his eye. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so we have to understand that if we're gonna, if we're gonna receive God's best for our life, then we got to learn how to forgive and how to walk in love. See, sometimes we are fussing, we are fighting and everything, and that just adds to our health problems. Did you know that? It adds to our health problems. And, and God don't get no pleasure of how many holes we have in our, in our body. Are y'all getting this? God wants you whole in your heart, spirit, soul, and body. It said in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, and notice what it said, and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Even as thy soul prosper. So we see that God is concerned about our health. He's concerned about our health. Amen. Now, now, now notice what he says right here, verse number, verse number 5 again. And the apostles said unto him, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Notice what it says in verse 6. And the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the seed. And it should obey you. Now, notice the Lord then say that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I will speak to the sycamine tree, and I will tell that sycamine tree to get out of your way. No, that's not what the Lord said. The Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say, you can speak, you can proclaim, you can declare, you can speak to that sycamine tree, and you can tell it to be thou plucked up by the root, and it should obey you. In other words, God word will work when you stand on his promises. His word is life and health and healing to all our flesh. Amen. His word is alive and it's waiting for us to take a hold to it and walk in it. Now, I want to take you back now to the Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 103. Hallelujah. Psalm 103. Very important. It's all good. It's all good. Notice what it says right here in Psalm 103. It says, Verse number one. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. His benefits. Who forgive it all thy, now notice what he said, all thy iniquity. That's powerful right there. Who forgiveth all thine iniquity, who heal no, listen to this part, who healeth all thy diseases, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. How many of you know that sickness and disease is not it's not from God? It is the enemy working overtime on you, trying to trying to destroy you. So he said, He redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who, and, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen. 
God is working overtime to try to get us to understand that everything that we have need of right now is available for us. Like I said, I used to be very, very sick. Very, very sick. I mean, I didn't have no money to go to the doctor. I didn't have money to go to the, to the if I wanted to, I couldn't, I, would, I couldn't afford to pay the bill if I had to win. Amen. I was hurting. And I was just crying out, oh, God, I need help. And God told me to open my Bible to Mark chapter 16. And that passage of scripture I read with you a while ago. He told me to open my Bible to that section of scripture. And then I read verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And I said, God, I believe in your name. There's, who, there's no one that's believing in your name as much as I do. Lord, I believe in your name. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils. Sickness is a, it's not something that comes from God. So if it comes from the enemy, then there's an a, 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 a enemy of God attached to that sickness. What is that? There's a demon. So he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Now notice the first thing he said, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpent. If they drink any other thing, they shall not hurt them. And I like this point right here. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He did not say that you need an apostle, evangelist, pastor, teacher to lay hands on you. He's talking to them that believe. Are you a believer? Then he's talking to you. I was very sick, and I didn't have no one around me to pray for me. I didn't have a telephone at that time to even call someone to come pray for me. I was living out in the cotton fields in the, in the country of Alabama, Hillsborough, Alabama, back off in the cotton field in a block house with no running water, no indoor plumbing. I mean, it was rough, but it was my training ground to be proven by God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, the anointing is starting to fall in this place right now. Amen? The anointing is starting to fall in this place right now because I'm sharing with you what's going to put you over in your predicament, in your situation. It's, it's, not a, it's not how much you can go to church that's going to help you. It's what you believe is going to help you. It's what you believe that's going to help you. In Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, in Mark chapter 11, in verse number, verse number, uh, the, the, the verse number 22, it says, it says, and Jesus has been said unto them, have faith in God. Now, that was not a request. When Jesus speaks, he expected to come to pass. Amen? And he said unto them, who is he, who's them he's talking? He's talking to his disciples. He told them to have faith in God. Now, why did he say to have faith in God? Because it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so Jesus tells him how to have faith in God. It's by believing the word. Notice what he said. Have faith in God. In verse 23, so for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, that whosoever shall say. What do we say a while ago in Luke chapter, in Luke chapter 17? If ye have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you should you could say to the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall be removed. Now God's reiterating what he said right here in Verse number 23. But now he gives you the criteria for the cause it to happen for you. He's not just telling you you can do it. He's telling you how to, how to make it happen for you. Let's, let's read it again. Verse 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Now notice this part right here. And shall not, what? Doubt in his heart. Shall not doubt in his heart. See, that area right there, that, that doubt is the enemy coming against what God has told you to do. You see, that's a spirit of doubt always coming against you to keep you from believing the truth. Mm. Whew, glory to God. And so he tells us right here, and for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. I got that underlined because, see, he's telling me how to get my faith to work. He's showing me how to get my faith to work. If I allow doubt in my heart, my faith has become void of power. Are y'all hearing that? 
If I allow doubt in my heart, the enemy has stopped me from advancing in faith. He has stopped me from believing God. Because there's a spirit. Doubt is a spirit. And it's an enemy of God. And it's your enemy too. He's your enemy also. Amen. Notice what he says now. Let's read on a little bit further. And shall not doubt his heart, but shall believe. Now notice he said, but believe. But shall believe. If you allow doubt, it's going to override you from believing. If you, have, if you believe, then it won't allow doubt to come in. See, you can't believe and you can't doubt at the same time. You're going to have to allow one to override the other. Y'all understand that? Amen. So in order for you to believe, you got to deal with the doubt. And we've been so religiously brainwashed that we walk around all day long, oh, that just tickled me to death. You know, that, you're speaking, you, 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 why are you cursing yourself like that? Your words have power. As a child of God, your words has power. Amen? So, how do we deal with the doubt? See, because doubt is produced the same way faith is produced, by what we hear. Doubt is produced the same way faith is produced, by what people hear say to us, or how we are listening, or how, we, or how close we're paying attention to what's being said. We can believe the gospel, and we can walk in divine health, or we can doubt the gospel and go to our grave early. Because, see, the Bible tells us in John 10, 10, the thief come not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen. To steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job. And let me tell you something. He's good at it. He's good at it. But as you begin to Apply Romans 12 and verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. As you begin to renew your mind, this is how you begin to deal with the spirit of doubt. Because now your mind is, stopped, is not thinking about all the negative forces that is working against you. And, there are, and all the things that is coming against your mind. Because now, as you begin to renew your mind, you're going to realize that I can bring every thought into captivity to the Holy Ghost. I can bring every thought into captivity and I can cast down every vain imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. But see, if I don't know the knowledge of God, then how can I know when the enemy is working against my understanding if I don't know? But if I have studied to show myself approved, a workman of God need not be ashamed, right to find the word of truth, I know when the enemy is coming against me trying to stop me from receiving the promises of God. Because, see, the word of God is alive. What do you mean the word of God is alive? Let's, let me show you. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 4. Did I, did I finish over here? Well, that's good enough. Go to Proverbs chapter 4. We can come back to that if we have to. But I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting, I'm preparing you right now. I'm preparing you right now. Because, see, you got to believe. you got to believe in order to receive the promise of God. Amen? you got to believe. And the Bible tells us right here in, in Proverbs chapter 4, and verse number 20, he said, my son, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. He has singled you out now because you are his son. Even if you're a woman, you're still, you still his son. You're his daughter. Amen? He's talking to you. He said, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my saying. In other words, pay attention to what I'm saying to you. Pay attention to what I'm saying to you. That's what the Lord, that's what the Lord is saying to us right here. He said, pay attention to what I'm saying to you. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my saying. Now notice he said, let them not depart from thine eyes. In other words, take that word before you day after day after day. He said, 
Let them not depart from before thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. I like verse number 23. He's still talking about his word. He said, for they, what is they? His word. His word. For they are life unto those that find them. His word is life to those that find them. And what else he said? And health to all their flesh. Oh, glory to God. That means my flesh can be healed. If my flesh is having a problem, my flesh can be healed. Because it's health to all my flesh. Mm. You ever had any, you, you know, you ever had any fleshly issues and, 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 and you know, you, you go to the doctor and all of a sudden, <sighs> I've been there. I ain't going to say that. I've been there. Verse number 23 says, Keep thine heart with all diligence. You know, after you have found the word of God, after you have begun to partake of the word of God, it's time now to guard your heart because, see, the spirit of doubt and the spirit of fear is looking to get in to steal your faith, to stop you from receiving the promises of God. There's a spirit of doubt and there's a spirit of fear that is working overtime to keep you from believing the gospel. From believing the gospel. And it says in verse number verse number four, verse number twenty three, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. For out of it are the issues of life. Now can we turn down to Psalm ninety one? I might give you, I might, I might not give you too many scriptures, Emma. Scriptures are good for you. Because see, God is calling us all to preach this gospel, to proclaim this gospel. And what is the people out of the world need to hear today? That they don't have to be sick no more. They don't have to be sick no more. The world need to hear this. I like this right here. Verse number one, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the, north, from the snare of the fowler and from the north of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and butler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow to fly by day. nor for the pestilence that, that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is thy refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no, I like this part right here, that's, that's what, I'm just reading the whole thing so I want y'all to get the full gesture of what's being said here. There, sh there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee and, and to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their, in their hand, lest thou dash a foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon lions and adders and young lions and uh, Dragon shall thou trample on the foot, on the foot, on the feet. Because he had set his love upon thee, therefore, I like, this is what you need to hear. Therefore, <coughs> I will deliver him, I will set him on high, because he had known my name, he shall call upon me, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and will be with him in time of trouble, and will deliver him in the, and honor him. And verse number 16, the last scripture says, with long life, with long life, with long life. <clears throat> so that showed me that whatever the enemy is trying to do to stop you, to try to destroy your health, when we turn to the word of God, the word of God has to answer. The word of God has to answer for us. If we can hold on to it, you find out, just like, just like the blind Bartimaeus, and uh, I think that's Mark, uh, Mark chapter ten, 
uh, what I think, but anyway. Mar uh, blind Bartimaeus, he was sitting on the street crying out. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. When did he start crying out? When he found out that Jesus was coming by his way, he heard all the commotion, he heard all the noise, and he began to cry out. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now notice the disciples that were with him, that were with Jesus, they told the men to be quiet. They told him to be quiet. And you know what he did? He hollered even more. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know what happened? They told him to be quiet again. You know what happened? He cried out the more. Now notice, the crowd is beginning to get loud and loud. Now this was only one man. But there was a whole crowd of people. You know, you know you, the revelation to that is? It wasn't the man that was crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. It was not his voice rising up above the people. It was the words that he spoke was full of faith. The words that he spoke was full of faith. And those words went up and touched the heart of God. And they came back down and touched the Son of God. And Jesus stopped in his track. <laughs> faith filled words will bring you right into the presence of Almighty God. When doubt and fear will keep you from the presence of God. Blind Bartimaeus, when he said, when he stopped, the, when Jesus stopped the track, he said, call him, bring him to me. And the disciple, the one that told him to be quiet, he said, oh, that's, don't worry no more. He's calling you. Get up. And what did blind Bartimaeus do? He pulled off the old garments. Why? Because he was getting ready to step into a new life. He was getting ready to step into a chain. He was getting ready to receive his miracle. Why? Because he did not give up. He believed the gospel. He believed that Jesus Christ was someone special sent from God that carried God's healing power in his life. And this man, he would not quit. He would not give up. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. It was not the loudness of his cry that stopped Jesus in the track. It was the man's faith that stopped Jesus in his tracks. You got to believe if you want something from God. You got to believe the gospel. Mark chapter 9, verse number 23. Glory to God. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. See, that means that you being a child of God, there's nothing is impossible for you. You can believe if you can believe, there's nothing that's impossible for you. You can receive your miracle. God is simply saying to you, believe. That's all he's saying to you. Believe. Believe. Can you believe today? Can you believe that everything that I shared with you was God's word? Amen. Amen. If you can believe that God is speaking to you today, then you are in the place right now where your miracle is right in your face. Waiting for you to open up and receive. It's your heart condition plays a great part in it. Because see, your heart is the place where belief take place. Your heart is also the place where doubt take place. You got to choose whether you're going to believe the gospel or whether you're going to doubt the gospel. It's a decision that I can't make for you. It's a decision that you're going to have to make yourself. Just like for salvation. I can't make you get saved. Only thing I have to do is present to you the message of salvation. You don't have to believe the gospel to be born again. The same way for you to be healed, you're going to have to believe the gospel for you to be healed. You know, I heard a man say, well, I don't believe in that healing message. I just want to go ahead and just beat the snot out of someone when they go to preaching that stuff. You ever heard somebody say something like that, Jesse? 
<laughs> I have. Amen. And you know what I said? I didn't actually I didn't say nothing. But you know what I'm thinking when I when someone talked to me like that? They have a, you know, they they gonna they gonna be confronted face to face with the opportunity to believe the gospel and be healed or not believe the gospel and walk away worse off than they were when they come. Amen. You see, I've seen the blind eyes open. I've seen the dead raised. I've seen the, the short limbs grow out. I've seen the deaf ears open. I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen holes in hearts close up. Because this message that I preach, I don't preach because somebody else has showed me. I preach because I've had an experience with God in this area. The experience that I have brought such conviction upon my life that I could never not preach this message. And I know a lot of people hate this message. But you got to understand, one day you're going to be in a situation where you're going to need this message. Because, see, you might be healthy and strong right now. One day you, you're going to be hurting. And you're going to say, I, I wish I could find a preacher that believe in divine healing and he will come pray for me. I've had him call me and I've seen God move in miraculous ways. And I'm going to tell you right now that God is going to move in your life. God is going to move in your life right now. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. Holy Spirit, I ask you in the name of Jesus to rest in this place upon your people. I give you glory for it, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of unbelief and I loose you from your assignment right now. You foul spirit of doubt, I command you go. Go! In Jesus' name. Father, let your healing power begin to rest upon the hearts of your people. And Father, I pray that they open up their hearts and receive right now by faith. See, Faith, you can't see it, you can only open up and receive it. Faith is a spirit, and I'm telling you, he's in this room right now. He's in here right now to minister to your heart. He's here right now to cause your heart to come to the next level, to bring you to the next level in your Christian walk. Open up your heart right now and receive by faith. Receive by faith the word that's been spoken here tonight. Receive by faith in Jesus' name. Now speak to your sickness or whatever it is that is bothering you. Speak to it out of your own mouth and command it to go. Behold, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, said the Lord. Speak, I say, to your situation. Speak to your illness. Speak to your body and command it to line up in Jesus' name. The Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. He, when he told me that, I laid his, I laid my own hands on my body. And my body was healed. And I've been healed ever since. And I'm still walking in divine health and healing. And that's why I teach, because I know it works. I know it works. You just simply got to believe it. 
just simply believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, I have edified your people. I have exalted your people. I have encouraged your people. I have brought them to the place to acknowledge faith in you. In your word releases your quickening spirit. I thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What I want to do right now, if you're in here today and you are sick and you, you want me to pray for you, you want me to come in agreement with you for your healing, I will lay, I will anoint you with oil today. And I will pray in agreement with you for your healing to fully manifest. But see, I don't know about you, but I believe the Word of God. I believe the Word of God. I see there have been people come to the church, and when they come down and stand in front of me, I'm, they get healed but without me even have to touch them sometimes. They get healed without me even having to touch. There's a man sitting down in the back row back there, got healed of uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and I didn't even have to touch him. There's a woman coming stand up in front of me. She began to shake, and the spirit of, uh, of, uh, of dep oppression, depression just lifted right up off of her. And she was on all kind of medication, and she went back to the pharmacy to pick up something else. They said, don't you need this medicine right here? She said, oh, no, I don't need that no more. I've been healed from that. She said, you can't be healed from that. Nobody can heal from that. She said, well, I did. God healed me. And so the pharmacist came to my church to find out was it true. And they got saved. <laughs> the pharmacist got saved. Amen. Sure did. And, uh, and, they, and they own a store, own a couple of stores, two or three stores. And so then after they got saved, they blessed me and my wife with some, some nice suits you know, it was, it was a blessing. When the power of God is manifested and the people see that it's God, I'm telling you something, it can change your life. It can literally change your life. Now I'm here, I'm, I'm letting you know again. If you want me to lay hands on you, you want me to pray for you, I'll do that right now. I'll do that right now. Hallelujah. And all I'm asking you to is believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Glory to God. Father, I have preached your word, and I have declared your word from the bottom of my heart. God, and I'm asking you right now for a miracle, a manifestation of your word in this man's body and in his life. Father, I anoint him with oil right now, and I release the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Now, Father, I ask you to touch his heart. I break every, I loose every spirit of doubt and fear from him now in the name of Jesus. I command you, go. Father, let his body be healed now. Let him be healed now in Jesus' name. Let him experience the full manifestation of the anointing working in him. And Father, I thank you for it. Now raise your hand. Act like you believe what I'm saying. Raise your hands to the Lord. Like this. Raise your hands to the Lord. And say, Jesus, I do believe. I do believe that you are the Son of God. I do believe that you are my healer. I yield, I yield my body to you. Heal my body, Lord. I repent of my sins. I ask for healing now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That go to power. That go to power. That go to power. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 
That's going to be a that's going to be a full recovery, a quick recovery, a quick recovery. The spirit of God is working in your body right now. That's going to be a quick recovery, amen. And you're going to see that what I have preached to you is from God. You're going to know it in your heart. God is reaching out to you, and He's saying, "Son, I am the Lord." thy God. Believe me and come to me. Make thou abode with me and I will I will make myself known to you. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. Jesus. 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 And the Lord says, Son, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. If you truly believe, then let me in. Let me in, said the Lord. If you truly believe that I am your Lord, do you truly believe that I died for your sin? If you truly believe that I rose again on the third day, I ask you to open up your heart and let me in. Let me in. Let me in. The Lord is asking you to let me in. And you will find out that all the things that you've been struggling with all begin to, I mean, begin to fall aside. It's just like when it's storming and the water it's running down off the side of the mountain. You see a lot of debris, a lot of trash running down with that water that is running down. God said, if you open up his heart, open up your heart totally to him. He said, everything that the enemy has placed in your life that's been attached to your life. He said, everything that the enemy has tried to hold you and bondage you. He said, I will wash it off. I will wash it off on every side. I will wash it off. I will wash it off. Hallelujah, Shekhar Messiah. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take the sword of the Spirit now, which is the Word of God, and I, shh, 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 I set him free. In the name that is above every name. Now, Father, I deliver this soul to you. Touch him, Father, and minister to his heart in a powerful way. I give you praise and glory for it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive. You receive? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for divine health and healing. I cancel every assignment against our health right now, Father. And I release divine health and healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. God, have your way. I give you praise and I give you glory for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Anyone else? One prayer. Anyone else? One prayer. Come on. Come on, sister. That's okay, mother. That's okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I lay hands upon your daughter and I cancel every assignment against her heart and her mind. Father, I release the peace right now to rest upon her. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, let it let, let that peace gird up the lungs of her mind. Oh, she came out of side. Thank you for it, Father. And Father, let all the, the, the deep wounds of her heart right now, all the re, all the hurt and all the pain that she experienced in her life, Father. God, let those wounds be healed now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. And Father, I ask you, Lord, that you reveal yourself to her heart. 
Reveal yourself to her heart, God, that she will know without a shadow of a doubt that you are who you say that you are and that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. I release your anointing right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I cancel every assignment of the enemy that's been, that has come her way. And I say, Father, let peace reign in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you believe the gospel? Do you believe the word this evening that you heard? Receive. Receive right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this little girl. This little precious girl. I pray for her, Father. And I just bless her, Father. I thank you, Father, for divine health and healing. It's hers. In Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that you just touch those little jaws. Where the mosquito bit her. And let her be healed. Amen. Yes. I, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyone else want prayer? <laughs> yeah, bring that baby up here. Oh my God. That baby has become very strong since I prayed for her the last time. Oh yeah. Huh? She's like growing. Yes. That's, this is a true testimony right here of the God's healing power. Aren't you, honey? Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your anointing on this little child. I curse this rash. Father, I release your healing power. Total restoration, God. You brought her a long way. Now, Father, I ask you for inner strength rising up within her, bring her to a full strength of her age. I thank you for it now, Father. In Jesus' name, I bless her. I bless her. And I release that anointing, Father, upon her. Thank you for it, Father. And I say, Father, she shall walk in divine health. She shall walk in divine health. I release that anointing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, so you coming too now. <laughs> Amen. No problem. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my dear wife. I ask you, Father, that you would touch her, that you would minister to her heart in a very compassionate and loving way, Father. And Father, open up her eyes that she will see and know the hope of your calling and what is the exceeding greatness of your power. I release your anointing right now, Father. I release blessings upon her. In Jesus' name, I cancel every demonic assignment against her health, against her life, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for providing for her for this schooling, helping her to, to do well on these, on these exams. Father, she's in her finals right now. And God, I just thank you that you will help her to do well in these exams. In Jesus' name, bring all back to her remembrance that she will pass these exams with flying colors. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it, Father. Amen. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for divine health and healing. I release your anointing, Father, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Everything that the enemy has tried to do, everything that has come to her against her family, Father, I counsel it right now. I release divine help. I release divine wisdom. I release divine knowledge, Father, that she will know how to deal with the situations at hand. God, she will not look at the circumstances, but she will look to you, and she will trust you with all her heart, with all her soul, and with all her mind. And Father, next week as she goes to this funeral, God, you will give her the ability to be a light. And Father, not to just go over the crowd, but you will give her the ability to be a light to those people. I bless her now in Jesus' name. And I give you glory for it. Amen. Mm. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. 
and she's walking in the vine house. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take go, go to mommy now. Go to mommy. Thank you, honey. Let me get the walk. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this brother with a sincere heart. God, he just come, Father, even as Thomas came in the room when you visited the disciple and he was not there. He did not truly believe. And he said he would not believe until he saw the signs. Father, I ask you to strengthen my brother's heart. Let the scriptures open up to his heart that he can believe. Father, I believe that the power of God is in the word of God that will illuminate every fiber of his being that will cause his understanding to be fruitful. I thank you for it right now, Father. As the word has gone forth, God, there is not one word will fall to the ground that concerns this man's life after of the words that were spoken today. So, Father, I release your anointing. I release your anointing right now that you will touch his heart, that you will minister to him, Father. I bless him now in the name of Jesus. I cancel every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease that will come against his heart and his mind and his household in Jesus' name. I release divine health and healing right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, help him, help his unbelief. I, re I thank you for it now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, brother, the Lord will say to you, if you had faith to believe, what you ask for will not be denied. As Barnabas cried out, it was not how loud he cried that caused my son to stop. It was his faith that caused my son to stop. And his faith made him whole. And I say to you today, if you can believe all things are possible for you, for you are my child, and I have called you, and I have not rejected you, I have received you. Mm. 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 So believe me, and believe my word, and my word will not return for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Receive that. God is going to reveal himself to you. And the time is now. The time is now. Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. We're going to go ahead and take our tithes and offerings up right now. If you really believe that God has heard from you, that you have heard from God, that God has touched you, then you can, you can also... Uh, Release your faith in your giving. You, you believe the gospel, then you'll give according to what you believe. If you don't believe, then you, you won't give. But if you believe, then you'll give. Amen. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. See, we're all called to walk and to minister to God. We must all preach the gospel. That means that we have a responsibility if we can't go to help the one that is able to go, to go. To help the one that God has sent out to go forward. Amen. So when we give, 
We're saying, Father, I believe your message. I believe the messenger that's been sent by you. And therefore, I want to plant this seed to help to propagate the gospel. God, Father, I just thank you right now that as we make a decision in our giving today, that you will speak to our hearts and we will give according to what you speak to our hearts. And Father, you said for us to give. And it shall be given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto our glory. So we believe your word, and so we stand on your promise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Did everybody give the one of you? Did you write a check? Let me see that. Uh, don't worry about it. Let me see. Yeah, but I saw you know, she ran out on my head. No problem. We still gonna put something in the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless this offering. I sanctify this offering. Father, may this offering be used for your kingdom and for your glory. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will multiply this seed sown back into the lives of your people, that they will not miss it, Lord God, but, but they will experience a financial breakthrough in their lives and in their finances. God, I believe that they will have more than enough to meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, I bless them now in Jesus' name. The Father, receive this offering, and I give you glory and praise for it. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be here today and say, Pastor, glory to God. I've never given my heart to the Lord before. I never made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. But Pastor, today I truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He died for my sin. And today I want to acknowledge Him publicly as my Lord and Savior. If that's you today. You never acknowledge Jesus Christ publicly as your Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you. I want, I, want to, I want to pray with you once again. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life publicly, you need to do that. So for the, for the sake of you not being ashamed of him and that he not being ashamed of you. Amen. If anyone here, want, you, need that, you need to commit your life to the Lord. Amen. It, I see that hand. Anyone else? You, anyone else? I see that hand. Anyone else? You want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life today publicly. You want to, you want to put the, you want to shame the devil. You want to shame the devil. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The next call is this. You hear today and you say, Pastor, I have made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life, but I backslid. I lived a life that not even becoming to be a Christian. And today I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want to Jesus Christ to be seen in my life, so I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. If that's you, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord today, I want to pray with you. You raise your hand. You're here today, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? Amen. Third call here today, you hear say, Pastor, I know that I must be born again. I know that I need, if I, I my life needs to be clean with God, but I've never been filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking other tongues. I need the power of God. I need to know that I have the power to say no when sin comes knocking at my door. I'd rather for Jesus to knock at my door. Because when he come in, we're going to have a good time. Amen. And so if you want Jesus knocking your door, you don't want the devil knocking your door no more, you want, you want the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, that you can minister to the, that you can just, just not be afraid to minister to the people around you, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. You never received the gift of the Holy Ghost. You want that gift. Right now, I pray with you. I see them here. I pray, I pray for you in that area also. You Right now, you, have, you don't have a church home. Last call. You're here today. You don't have a church home. And you believe in God right now that God has assigned you to this house to learn the Word of God, to grow in the Word of God. You want to be a part of this church right now. I want, you, I want to pray with you. If that's you, <laughs> amen. I see that hand again. Amen. Now, if you really mean business, if you really want to be, you're really coming to be serious with God, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you to just, just be bold again. Just get up and meet me right back up here.
meet me back up here again, and I'm going to pray right now, and we're going to uh, just just lead you into that prayer of salvation. Amen. Amen. And in, in Romans chapter 10, verse number 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, this is the criteria of being saved, is to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that God raised him from the dead. This is the main criteria. Amen. And he said that, and, those, and then it says, uh, the raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse number 10 says, for with the heart man believe it. See, you just you, you got to know that God did this, but you got to believe it in your heart. That's why it's so important that you learn to believe in your heart, because there's an enemy that's trying to keep you doubting in your heart. If he can keep you doubting, he can keep you defeated. Amen. But he said in verse 10, he said, for with the heart man believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And verse number 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Shall be saved. And as you have just re uh, uh, raised your hands and, and confessed that you want to make a public uh, a stand for the kingdom of God, God is right here right now to touch you and to lead you right into his presence. Say this. Raise, just, just put your hands right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lead them through this prayer, I thank you, Father, that you will minister to their hearts by the power of your spirit. And God, I believe with all my heart that they will experience salvation. I believe, Father, that they will have a regenerated spirit. And that you, Father, will make yourself known to them on a personal level. I believe that, Father, and I'm asking for that in Jesus' name. Father, for you added to the church as you see fit. Father, as they have already raised their hand, they have already raised their hands to be a part of this church, this congregation. Now, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus. Not only did they raise their hand for, the, for that, Father, but they raised their hand to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I ask you, Father, let them receive what they ask. I give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. Say this, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sin. And I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe you died for my sin. And I ask you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I need you. I want that power to be a witness for you. Fill me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That I may walk in the power of your word. Jesus, baptize me with the fire I receive now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it. I receive now. Now, Father, I pray and I release your anointing right now in Jesus' name. Touch right now, Father. I ask you in Jesus' name. And I give you glory and I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to do some teaching on your baptism in the Holy Spirit that you would have an understanding of what is expected of you once you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then we're going to pray for you again in that area. Amen? But not today. We love you. We thank God for you. Now, right now, I'm going to tell you something. The angels in heaven are rejoicing right now because of you. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. And not only are the angels rejoicing, God has put a place in my heart to see you, to excel. And I'm going to, I'm going to call you guys. I'm going to check up on you guys. I'm going to push you into the kingdom. <laughs> Love you and thank y'all. God bless. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Is this anybody else?
Hey, all right, then. Well, let's let's don't forget on uh, Wednesday night we'll meet back here again at seven. It's at six thirty. Wednesday night at six thirty, we're gonna meet back here again, and uh, we were gonna have a guest speaker this coming Wednesday, but uh, we it, 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 it's been canceled. It's been canceled, so we won't have a guest speaker this Wednesday, and so we just go on to do what we have to do. But but meanwhile, I want you all to, to, to just pray for us. My wife, in November, she's going to Jerusalem, Israel, and I want y'all to be in prayer for her about that. Amen. I, I'm going to be here to keep it, to run the church and to take care of the little baby girl. Amen. And so we going we want you all to just keep her in prayer because there's a lot going on there right now. And but I know that God protection is there because there's a whole group of them going, a whole group of them going. Amen. I've already been there. That's why I'm not going this time. I would love to go with her, but I I just don't need to go right now. I need to stay. I need. Yeah, and, and and that's right. We're she's traveling with Dr. Marcelillo Ministries, World Evangelist. Amen. Marcelillo World Evangelist Ministries. You'll be traveling with him. Amen. That's our spiritual papa. So those of you that know Dr. Marshall really, you know that he's a mighty man of God. Amen. So if all hearts and minds are clear, don't forget about uh, Wednesday night again, 6.30. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, write them down. Put them in the white box back there in the corner. And we will be praying. We, we, we pray for them all the time. So you put your prayer requests in the white box, you will be prayed for. Amen. God bless you. Let us all stand. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this time together. We ask you, Lord God, that you would just, Lord, just have your way and minister to our hearts yeah. continually as we leave this place. Let this word just rise up within our hearts again that we will hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Father, I bless your people. I thank you, Lord God, for your miracle working power working on their behalf. Yeah. Father, help those that need help to believe you. Show yourself strong on their behalf. Father, because I believe that there's nothing impossible for you, nor is it anything impossible for them that believe. So, Father, I thank you. I believe for them that you will show yourself strong on their behalf. And I thank you and I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you on Wednesday night, those that can make it, at 630. God bless you. Oh, I see, I see fog, it's foggy in here. I see the glory of God in this place. I need to uh, turn it. Huh? I don't see no fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Glory of God. You enjoy yourself today, man? Yeah. You going to come back again? Yeah. Maybe I'm going to I might come back.